Good afternoon and welcome to Kempton Park. We're here on the Friday night. At the moment, as you can see, the frost covers are deployed everywhere. Protection for the ground, but we're set to have a great day's racing tomorrow. Stephen, we're here at the final fence. The Bet Dak Chase will be running tomorrow. But what are your favourite memories here at Kempton for the King uh, George? So many, so many. I remember I, what first got me into racing actually was Florida Pearl. Oh, yes. And I remember my grand going absolutely mental. And I was so young. At, well, I was only relatively young, but like... That got me into racing. I was looking at him thinking, geez, this sport is amazing. Like, this is what, you know yeah. what I mean? And then a few years later, Kick and King, absolutely. Tom Taff. Oh, plowed through the last. And then the Santa Claus running across the track oh, right, as well. I remember like, that. Yep. carnage. Like, you know, um, some great memories in the past. But what about you? Well, I actually remember the Florida Pearl race. And if I'm correct, best mate was second in that with Tony McCoy. He was, yeah, he was, yep. yeah. Um, for me, it's got to be Kato Star. I was here for all of his victories. And it was a truly iconic time of racing. You had him and Denman going head to head in the Gold Cup. But every year on Boxing Day, blogger's birthday, I was here freezing my pants off and uh, seeing King Kato. It was pretty special. Hopefully it's a bit warmer tomorrow. Absolutely. If you are coming racing tomorrow, make sure you dress up warm because it is very chilly indeed. But we're looking forward to the Bet Dak Chase tomorrow. Seven great races, three or four of them live on ITV. Three, three. three races live on ITV. It's going to be a cracking card here at Kempton and it's always a great day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Cheers. Four cups of green tea, a bloody hot shower, hair dryer all over my body, and I've finally defrosted. It's great to see you all here. Thanks for tuning in once again. Without your support, I wouldn't be doing these videos. So thumbs up from me to all of you. As you all know, I was at Kempton today, and you'll see that here below now. If you know who this horse is before I say his name, think about it, think about it. It's King Kato, the legend, the absolute iconic figure here at Kempton Park. It's not just about King Cato, we've also got Desi in the background over there. We're here at Kempton Park today just doing a few bits and bobs before the big Bet Dak chase day tomorrow and it's exciting stuff indeed. Kempton have got the frost covers, covers down, I'm actually not able to talk right now. Fingers are freezing, if you're coming racing tomorrow, dress up warm but it's always great to see this boy here at Kempton Park, loads of great And yeah. It was fr 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 freezing. I've literally just defrosted. Now, if you're going to Kempton tomorrow, here's a few tips from the blogger. Double socks, double pants, double trousers, double shirts, double ties, double jumpers, double jackets, double hoodies, scarves, eye goggles, because even your eyes are going to get cold. Double and triple the lot. It is Baltic out there, boys and girls. Dress warm. Dress accordingly. Now, it's obviously going to be a cracking card. Um, seven races on the Kempton card, sponsored by BetDAC, who I do some work for as their brand ambassador. And it's great to see the purple machine shining. Really proud of them for getting back into the sponsorship scene. And uh, it's going to be a great day at Kempton. We hope to see you all there tomorrow. We're sponsoring six races on the card, including the three top races there, all shown live on ITV4. So make sure to tune in. And if you don't know much about BetDAC, we're a 2% betting exchange where we offer great value. You can back horses, you can lay horses. Backing and laying at only 2% commission is terrific value. And it's great to put some real pressure on our rivals who are charging people 5%. Paying 2% makes a bloody big difference. And BetDAC, you know, they're also very, very, very highly rated on their customer service with their clients. On Tuesday, we had Teddy Sheringham and Tony Cascarino down at a football event in a big pub down in Victoria with a lot of our clients there. And it was a great night on BetDAC. And you can see a bit of that here now down below. How's life going in general, Teddy? We'll start with you. Very good, mate. Can't grumble. Um, been doing a little bit of coaching out in um, or management out in India. I was going to say, you're looking tanned. Didn't go as well as uh, as called it in the plan. So right. I'm back home a little bit earlier than expected. Are you staying for long? Say, say no more. Say no more. All right. And Tony, yourself, obviously the, the punters at home all know you a lot. We talked about the Chelsea game. How's life going? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm, yeah. We've had a bit of a rich vein of form, haven't we? We've oh, had a few good winners. Time. This is good we have indeed. Live, live on. And now we're. We can get a few bottles here. A few bottles of salt. Through the post. Absolutely. Yeah, no, Corona or so, I don't mind either. Yeah, exclusive. Are you having one or not? Oh, but I'll be having one once I put the camera down. Yeah. Well, get the camera down. And... We'll, we'll talk quickly about the game tonight, um, Teddy. Chelsea, Barcelona. Um, Barcelona haven't got the best of away records against Chelsea. Only got one win in six. How do you see it going? 
uh, Barcelona for me. Really? Yeah, even even with that stat, uh, I just I just see him being too good. Yeah. I know first legs are really dodgy to, to pick as well. Mm. Um, I think both teams would like the game in the balance for the yeah. second game. Uh, gives Chelsea a chance. They don't want to be out of the tie. If they, right. they lose the game 2-0 or whatever tonight, they're yeah. out of the tie for me. So they have to keep it tight. Barcelona will be happy to keep it tight. So it makes for a tight game. But you know what Barcelona are like. They come out and they play as well. They do give you a chance if you, if you, if you have a go at them. But, um, Having said all that, I still fancy Barcelona. You've played against some great players in your time. Just how good is Messi? Oh, he's so good. He's, he's got to be the best of all time for me. Really? Um, just keeps doing it week in, week out. Yeah. Season in, season out. You know, it's the players that have played with him say it's ridiculous, even, mm. even better in training. Yeah. You know, and when you can reproduce that skill and talent, yeah. day in, day out, you just know he's a master and uh, he's the best for me. And finally, back in... Right, let's kick off with the 115, the first race on the card at Kempton tomorrow. Six races sponsored by BetDAC. We've got the 115, the two mile five, back or lay on BetDAC handicap hurdle. It's a zero to 135 for handicap hurdlers, 14 runners on good to soft ground, and they'll be jumping 10 hurdles. It's an interesting race, and uh, Nicky Henderson has three horses in the race. Let's kick off with the betting. Monbeg Legend 11 to 2, the Mighty Don 6 to 1, Django Django 7s for John Joe. Take to Heart, 15 to 2 for Nicky. Master Dancer for Tim Vaughan, 8. Awesome Rosie for Alan King, 10s. And King's Walk is 12 to 1. 4. Man of the Moment, Colin Tizard, who's operating at a 26% strike rate. 9 winners from his last 34 runners. He's in good form, Colin. Now, on Nicky's blog here on Unibet, he has three horses running. And basically, Premier Bond, he says, needs better ground. But he's been disappointing. Monbeg Legend. Wasn't disgraced on soft at Taunton last time. He was off since July, so will definitely be more improvement to come. Take to the heart, he basically says, is appallingly handicapped. And if Nicky's saying he's appallingly handicapped, you probably think he isn't going to win. Let's start with Monbeg Legend. He's an eight-year-old who's only had four runs over hurdles. Very lightly raced. First time up in a handicap hurdle. Last time out, he ran behind Boyt, trained by Warren Greatrix. Now, that ran, went on to run a cracker up until the point he fell three out in the Rendlesham over at Haydock. Boyd seems to be improving a lot, and um, the handicapper hasn't reacted here. He's left Monbeg Legend off a 1-3-3. Ned Curtis takes off a very handy 5, which effectively means he's going to run off a 1-2-8. Um, and you'd have to think, judged by Nicky's confidence in his blog there, the fact he's going to be a bit fitter, he's going to like this better ground, he's going to like the step up and trip. You can see Monbeg Legend running a very, very big race indeed. Moving on to the mighty Don, this is going to be my selection in the race. He's trained by Nick Gifford. He's a young six-year-old and he's a horse I've followed all season and he's a horse I've lost money on all season. Started off the year with a run at Cheltenham, uh, finished seventh there. It was a pretty decent run of 21. Went back to Cheltenham again. He was eighth of 16. Bit disappointing that day, but then he went to Ascot and he ran behind Golan Fortune off a 1-2-3. Mighty Don was off a 127 that day. Golan Fortunes continue to thrive and improve, and that's decent form. They pulled 15 lengths clear of the third that day. He franked that run next time up at Huntingdon, where he stepped up and tripped to three mile one on soft ground. Basically got very tired in the last two furlongs, and I don't think he conclusively stayed the trip. Nick Gifford steps in back in trip today from three mile one to two mile five on better ground. And I think this is really going to suit the mighty Don. Nick Gifford, he's had one winner from his last five runners operating at a 20% strike rate. He's off a 1-3-2. His mark does appear slightly stiff, but I think each way with some bookmakers going four places, he could be an each way bet to nothing. And he's currently top price six to one. Mighty Don, he'd be my selection for the race now. There's been money for some horses in this race. Kings Walk 14s into 10s. The Mighty Don 7s into 6 to 1. And on top of that, there's been a real springer for a horse trained by, if I can find him, Ian Williams, Wolf Catcher, 20s into 12 to 1. Now, I want to give you a little sneaky outsider in this race. He could be worth a pound or two each way. He's a horse called My Charity, number 12, trained by Graham McPherson. Kieran Keelan Woods doing the steering. First time up at Worcester, he was second to Springtown Lake. Now, this is a decent 140 handicap hurdler of Philip Hobbs's, who was third at Cheltenham and second to on the blind side. Very good form. That was on good ground at Worcester. Next time up, he ran behind Ernest Scoffey Oscar of Emma Lavelle's. He was beaten 20 lengths. 
He got a bit tired in the last three furlongs, but that horse has since gone on to win a grade two at Doncaster. Again, very good form. Next time up, he ran on heavy ground at Cheltenham in a listed race. He's probably trying to get a handicap mark. He was beaten a fair old way, and I wouldn't take that form too literally. He makes his handicap debut here today off a 120. Graham McPherson's in very good form, actually. He had a winner yesterday with Red Admiral. Two winners from his last eight runners are operating at a 25% strike rate. And my charity, what price is he? He's a top price 16 to 1. Now, with four places each way, I'm going to have an each way bet on my charity, and I'm probably going to have an each way bet on the Mighty Don. They're going to be my two against the field in the 115, the Bet DAC. Back or lay on Bet Dak Handicap Hurdle. Let me know your selections down below. It's a very competitive race to kick the card off. And um, if we could get a big price winner in the first, we'll be absolutely flying. Right, kicking on to the 150, the two and a half mile. Bet Dak now 2% commission Pendle Novice Chase. It's a grade two. We've got only four runners. They're going to jump 16 fences on good soft ground. And this for me is a short price, but he really ought to win in my opinion. Siren name for Paul Nichols. He's got all the best form in the book. And he's a horse you'd like to think is on an upward curve. And I read Paul's blog and basically he's just gone on to say... Great chance. His best going right-handed. Both the trip and the track will play to his strengths. He seems fine at home, even though the race might have come soon enough from last time. But he goes there with a great attitude and a great chance. And um, you'd have to think he's going to take all the beating. He was very impressive at Kempton on the 27th, where he ran in a grade two. The wayward lad and his chase and hammered Shantu Rock and Tommy Silver from the front. Made all, drew clear. That was really impressive. And he went on to prove that form was no fluke. And the Sissy Isles novice chase at Sandown where he chased home Terrafort and only got beaten a neck. Now, Nicky rates Terrafort fairly highly. Those two both look really good novices, and he had to give that horse three pounds that day. That was a grade one. He's dropping down into a grade two that looks pretty weak. I'd be fairly devastated if Sirene, number one, doesn't win the 150. The main danger appears to be the unit. Had some good form, but we haven't seen him for 111 days. Um, last seaman running at Huntingdon behind Willoughby Court. His jumping left a bit to be desired that day. And you might think he might just potentially need this run after being off for so long. Petru for Dan Skelton has been running over three miles and two and a half in handicap chases. He's gone up from 126 to 137. I'd be very surprised if he could beat a 150 horse only receiving five pounds. And for good measure, I'm not quite sure what for good measure is doing in this race. His jumping leaves something to be desired. He's running over a trip too short of his best, in my opinion. There's no Barry Geraghty on board. Tom O'Brien's doing the steering, and I think that tells you all you need to know. He's got absolutely no chance whatsoever in my book. For me, Siren Name, he wins the 150. I want to see him win impressively, and hopefully I get to hand the trophy over to Paul Nichols. The 225 at Kempton, the two-mile bet deck, changing for the better Adonis Juvenile Hurdle. It's a grade two for Juvenile, seven runners, Eight hurdles to be jumped with 17 grand going to the winner. And again, we've got a red hot favourite and justifiably so in redemption for Alan King, who in my opinion is the best trainer in the country of a juvenile hurdle. Now, his mentor, the man who taught him a lot, the late David Nicholson, he too was one of the best trainers of juvenile hurdles. So it seems that Alan has learned the craft of getting the best out of these youngsters at this tender age. And um, Radishan's done nothing wrong. He's had two runs over hurdles, winning two races at Kempton fairly easily. He needs to improve his jumping, but he's only a young horse. And with the potential of more to come, you can see why he's your 10 to 11 on favourite. Boo go, bo go, go, bo goose blogger for Jair Macair, fascinating runner. He is your set four to one second fab. Malaya for Paul Nichols, six to one. Grand Saucy 14s, harmonized 20s. Casperano for Brendan Powell. And da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. we've gone brain dead today. And Brendan Powell Sr., that confused me. And then we've got Bidder Do, ridden by Sean Bowen for Venetia. But um, you have a look at Radishan here. He really does look the one to beat. It's not the most competitive of races. Um, and I'll be disappointed if he gets beat. I mean, basically, on the form we've seen so far, there's potential for plenty more to come. And uh, Alan King remains in really good form. Wayne Hutchinson doing the steering. And we often see Alan in the winner's enclosure at Kempton. Seven wins from his last 27 runners, operating at a 26% strike rate. He's doing really well at present. This Bo Ghost is a fascinating um, runner for Jeremy Care. 
you know, obviously one of the legendary French trainers had horses like Gere de Cochet and sold some of his best horses to us, to the English and Irish trainers. But um, he was eighth last time at Oitoy, fell before that, won a race at Oitoy. Hard to know exactly what he's capable of. He's been off for 111 days, but this is a man who knows how to train some very, very talented juvenile hurdlers. And then you've got Malaya for Paul Nichols. You know, she's a filly who hated the ground at Aintree. I'm surprised Paul ran her there, to be honest. She's back on better ground. And I think... Judging on how she ran last time, you're going to see a big improvement in this filly today. That's Malaya. She's your third favourite at 5-1. to one. And the rest, really, for me, have a lot to prove. Um, Kasparenko for Brendan Powell, a 94-rated flat horse. He's being chucked in at the deep end here, and he's going to have to be very, very good to win. But um, Brendan Powell's a great trainer, and uh, if anyone can do it, Brendan can. But for me, it's boring. But Radishan, a two-time course and distance winner, is clearly the Right, the big race of the day, the 335, the three-mile bet Dak handicap chase. It's a grade three, class one. The winner's going to get 56k large, large, and 15 runners on good to soft ground. Going to be jumping 18 fences. It's a really good race. Theatre Guides top weight here off of 11 stone 12, carrying 152. He's a pass course and distance winner. And he, he won this race in 2016 and he was third last year. He's getting on a bit, but Collins' horses are back in form. Let's run through the betting. Acting last 4-1 for Harry Fry. Master D for Fergal 8s. Tin Turn Theatre for Sam Twist and Davis and Nigel is 8s. Theatre Territory, 8-1 to one for Warren Great. It's Go Conquer for John Joe 11s. Art Mores 12s for Paul Nichols. Ballycan 14s. Josses Hill for Nicky 16s. Theatre Guide for Colin 16s. As the me 18 to 1. And that uh, won't go through all of them. But um, it's a really interesting race, this, as I already said. Theatre Guide, he always runs well in this. He is getting on a bit, but you wouldn't rule him out. Now, a special promo here from Bet Dak. If any horse name um, with the number number two wins we're going to give two thousand pounds to the groom which is a really really great incentive to bet that fair play to the purple machine where you get great value every day so if go conquer wins the groom we're going to give you two grand large mate you'll be bloody happy with that won't you so i'm sure the groom will be uh, hoping go conquer wins so that's there you go um but talking about go conquer had a really good year when that font won an ascot landing a big prize and then his jumping went to the dogs on the 23rd of december at ascot behind gold present who was supposed to run in this race but unfortunately heard it hurt his foot nicky said if the decks were 24 hour decks he would have ran but because they were 48 hour decks he couldn't enter the horse because he wasn't quite ready which is a bit disappointing that but gold present would have probably been ready to come back in this race but anyway, Gold, Gold Conquer, he's off a 151. I think Aidan Coleman's the best English jockey, the best jockey riding in England. Um, I think he makes the least amount of mistakes. And I think Aidan Coleman really is the jockey to watch out for for the next few years. And Gold Conquer is going to come here with a huge chance. He's off a 151. I think he can still be competitive off of that mark. And I think this better ground is going to suit him. The other horse I like in this race is Tin Turn Theatre. For Nigel and Sam Twiston Davis. Now, he's a horse who's made a fair few mistakes. He unseated his rider at Cheltenham on the 15th of December. He was um, upsized, travelling strongly, but not fluent, and unseated his rider at 17th. Went to Kempton on the 27th and won a decent 0 to 145 event. Was kept wide all the way, won pretty readily off a 134, beating a horse called Pilgrim's Bay who actually won this race last year, which is really interesting. Um, he beat him fairly convincingly there, so that's uh, quite a strong form line. He went to Haydock last time, he ran in the Peter Marsh, it was over 3 mile 1 on heavy ground, he got tired and he unseated his rider. I think back at 3 miles today, back on the better ground, being a course and distance winner, he's a young progressive 7 year old, he's only off a 138, which I think is a very, very feasible mark indeed. I think he's got to be the each way player of the race and I can see 8 to 1 all over the boards at the moment. Some firms are going 5 places each way and 4 places each way. Some really good each way terms there if you're an each way backer. But I do like the look of Tin Turn Theatre in the Bet Dak Handicap Chase. Um, talking about acting last, your 4 to 1 favourite. You know, what can I say about this horse? For a start... He's done nothing but improve, winning off a 135, 141, 143, and is now up to 149. Now, the race it won last time out at Ascot, I was there that day. I backed Guitar Pete, who unseated his rider, and he was a second favourite. Ultimately, I don't think Acting Lass had anything to beat that day. And because of that, I'm going to have to oppose Acting Lass. It wouldn't be a bet for me. Up another £6. 
Harry Fry is a bit of a master, and I have been impressed with this horse, don't get me wrong, had a second to Finian's Oscar as a novice hurdler. I just think he still has a fair bit to prove and could be on a stiff mark. The other horse I like in this race is Paul Nichols' horse, Art Maresk. Second to waiting patiently over two and a half miles at Kempton last time. He absolutely loves this better ground. He was beaten eight lengths that day, receiving four pounds, but we know how good waiting patiently is. He's a potential superstar. And I think, you know, Art Maresk is a horse who hasn't had a lot of things go his way. You could see him run a fairly decent race at the 12 to 1 available. But my selection in the Bet That Handicap Chase is going to be Tin Turn Theatre at 8 to 1 and Go Conquer for John Joe O'Neill at 11 to 1. I'd love to see number two win. So the groom gets a lovely two grand first, uh, two grand gift from Bet That, the best exchange out there. Let me know who you think is going to win this race. It's a really competitive affair and it's going to be shown live on ITV4. Flying along to the 10 past four, it's a two and a half mile handicap chase, the Bet Back 2% commission exchange, a zero to 130 handicap, eight and a half grand to the, to the winner, eight runners on good to soft ground, jumping 16 fences. Looks a tricky race on paper, but there are two horses that stand out to me. Let's spin through the betting. Cave Blanco, four to one, no ceiling fours, four fact sixes. I'd like the option for Barry G, 13 to two. Favorito Bucks, 13 to two. Rothman, eight. Vlaslur de Granville, 10s. And enjoy responsibly, 12 to one. Now, I'm going to have a punt here on the outside of the field. And that is enjoy responsibly. Gamble responsibly. Oliver Sherwood's horse. Oliver's horses are finally back in some decent form. He's had a tough 18 months, Oliver Sherwood, to be honest with you. His horses haven't been running the best, but uh, recently there's been signs that he's doing fairly well. So fair play to Oliver Sherwood, who had Raven Black win the other day, and Rouge uh, Blank, who beat my horse, but we'll let him off. Um, this enjoyed responsibly is an interesting horse. I think he's a far better horse on a better surface, and he's going to get that at Kempton with the ground drying out. It's good to soft. Uh, he ran at Fakenham last time in a decent race on the 19th of September, on December, where he was fourth, only beaten three lengths. Connor Schumacher was doing the steering that day. The official going was soft. He's back on good to soft today. And Harrison Beswick takes off a very handy seven pounds, which means he won't race off a 1-2-3. It'll be off a 1-1-6. Brings his racing weight down to an official 11 stone. I think a 12-1. to 1, This horse could be overpriced. He's got some decent form in the book. He absolutely hosed up at Fakenham on the 1st of November. Obviously likes that track. Trap. Trap. Track, blogger. Track, you muppet. But um, the race that he was fourth in last time at Fakenham, the winner for Ben Pauling has come out to frank the form. And uh, I just think that this horse could have a fair bit more to give. He is a nine-year-old. He is racing off a one, two, three. But I just think Oliver Sherwood's horses are running fairly decent. And the other horse I like in here is Graham Merck. Muck Muck Pearson's horses, and the reason for that is he's a yard in form. Um, Red Admirable, as I already stated, has already won yesterday. He had a double, uh, sorry, he had a winner the day before that with Daydream Alooms. I think his horses are running really well, and that run at Weatherby last time out behind Mercy and Prince, where he was only beaten a neck, is really, really decent. I rate Mercy and Prince quite highly. I think back on this better ground, it was heavy there, he's going to be an even better horse, and um. He's off a one two eight, 8 which I think he can be competitive there. So I think my two selections in there are going to be the outsider at 12 to 1. Enjoy Responsibly, who I'll be backing each way, and Cave Blanco at 4 to 1. Bit of a tricky affair, that. Um, it will be one for the smaller stakes. On the card, the 445, it's a National Hunt bumper, the Bet Dak free trading tools, National Hunt flat race. We've got nine runners in this. Good to soft going, three grand to the winner. Spin through the betting. We've got Pim at 13 to 8 for Nicky Henderson. Danny Kirwan at 2s. Saturday Night Fever 15 to 2. Bridge of Guards 10s. And From the Heart 12s. Now, Nicky Henderson's had a few disappointing bumper uh, favourites recently. He had one beaten there today over at Warwick. And that was called um, Be That As It May. And it had the one at uh, Ascot recently as well. Been fairly disappointing with his bumper horses recently. Pim's been a talking horse um, ever since he won at Air under Jeremiah Agrar. Cool Mix, who was second, that's a fairly decent horse. Aye Aye Charlie's won a race or two after that. The form looks decent, but um, he's pretty short here, Pim, at 13 to 8. The horse I like the look of here is Danny Kirwan for, for Paul Nichols. Now, Paul said in his blog, this isn't really a bumper horse. They, they want to go novice herding with him, but it's a bit late in the season to do that. So they're going to keep him over bumpers for now. 
He was due to run at Newbury last week, but the ground was a bog there, so they've saved him for this one now. And um, he's your second favourite there at 2-1. to one. I think I'd take Danny Kirwan over Pym at this stage. There's obviously loads of unexposed horses here. You've got Barry Geraghty riding for Fergal O'Brien. He was disappointing when last seen at Ascot. He was 7-4 favourite that day. He's been off for 112 days, so they've probably done a fair bit of uh, schooling with him on the gallops there. And then you've got Alan King, who's always to be feared in these, um, these yards. And that's a full brother. That's a, bo- a brother to Captain Woody, owned by my friend called Lawrence. Shout out to you, Lawrence, if you're watching this. But a decent race to finish the day at Kempton. My selection there will be Denny Kirwan. Good luck with all your bets at Kempton. It's a cracking day, sponsored by BetDAC. We're back in the sponsorship game. And I'm, I like the look of the racing. Um, hopefully, we don't get too many non-runners due to the ground drying out. But uh, it should be a cracking affair. Quick skip over to Newcastle in the 320. I do like the look of Raised on Grays on here for John Quinn, ridden by young Ross Chapman. It's a two mile mare's novice hurdle on heavy. And uh, I've got a good form line with this as I know the horses that she's been running against and beating. She beat Kalahari Queen over at Catterick. That was a decent run and she followed it up with a cracking second to a horse called Baby Tickler, trained by Donald Williams. Now, she tried to give that big nine-year-old four pounds that day. She pulled 11 lengths clear of the thirst. Baby Tickler's gone on to frank the form by just getting beat by my nap on that day, the Delray Monkey, who was exceptionally well handicapped. I think all of those form lines are very strong indeed. And I think raised on graze on with Ross Chapman taking off the five means she's got no penalty in this mare's novice hurdle. She's been backed already. She's into 11 to 8 from 6 to 4, 13 to 8. I do like the look of raised on graze on there. And that is in the... If we can get it back here, come back, come back, come back. The 320 at Newcastle. Have a look out for that mare trained by John Quinn. Bloggers, good thing at Newcastle. <laughs> now, obviously, if you're a gooner like me, it can just be a torrid time. And last night I had to go for a bit of cardio. I went out for a run after watching Arsenal against that team. It just broke my heart. And uh, I'm very much pro Wenger. Wenger out. Just get out, mate. Get lost. Get out. Bye, Wenger. Bye. Move on. Anyway, we're taking on Man City at Wembley in the Carabao Cup on Sunday. And, uh, you know, City are in terrific form. Um, obviously, a massive shot for them as well against Wigan as well as ourselves. So it will be interesting. We always do well at Wembley. We're a team who plays well there, but we're really going to lead to lift our game up. Um, if we could do City there, it really would be fantastic. Highly unlikely with the way we defend. We defend like school kids at times, but... Um, 9 to 2 Arsenal, City 8 to 13 on. Big difference in the prices. A bit of value could lie with Arsenal. Let me know. Do we, as a Gooner, have any chance whatsoever? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest here. No, we bloody don't. Do you know why? Because we're shit. We're shit and we need big freaking changes. If you don't change your attitude in life, you don't get anywhere. Anyway, back to Kempton. Let's crack on. Um, I just want to let you know the selections, a quick recap. In the 115, I'm going for the Mighty Don and a big sneaky outsider in my charity at 16 to 1. The 150 is Paul Nichols' race to lose, Siren name. The 225, I'm losing my voice, Redition, 10 of 11 on. In the 3 o'clock, um, Mount Des Avlors and potentially Humphrey Bogart each way at 9 to 1. The 335, I'm opposing the favourite here in Acting Nass. I'm going for Tin Turn Theatre at 8 to 1. And my other sneaky outsider there is John Joe Neal's at 11 to 1. Number 2, the groom will get 2 grand. You guessed it. Bet Dak. Oi, oi. The 410, uh, Cave Blanco at 4 to 1. And again, the outsider of the field, enjoy responsibly at 12s. And finally, Danny Kirwan in the 445 for top trainer Paul Nichols. I will see you all at Kempton tomorrow. It will be freezing. It will be brutal. It will be cold. But we are National Hunt fans. We don't give a fuck about the weather. We're not afraid of the cold. We go to see these beasts because we love this game. See you all at Kempton tomorrow. I'm going to continue defrosting because tomorrow I'm going to be frosted. Over and out from the blogger. Much love to you all. Let me know your bankers down below. What's your